the dinosaurs existed on our planet for roughly 165 million years. And for the majority of that time, they were the dominant life form on Earth. This gave them an awful lot of time to adapt, evolve, and blossom into hundreds, likely even thousands, of different species, forms, and functions. When we think of dinosaurs, typically a select few images come to mind. Gigantic two-legged theropods, such as Tyrannosaurus, four-legged tanks, such as Triceratops and Stegosaurus, long-necked titans, such as Brachiosaurus, or speedy small predators, such as Velociraptor. The truth is that dinosaurs were a hugely diverse group of animals, and many more strange and unfamiliar forms took hold across the deserts, swamps, forests, and plains of our planet's past. Today, we will be taking a look at 10 of the most peculiar non-avian dinosaurs to ever walk our planet. And these are just the ones from the Cretaceous period, the time when dinosaurs had well and truly taken over the globe. From a species of Tyrannosaur adapted to polar regions, to a tiny theropod that may have lived like a modern-day monkey or lemur, we will cover the globe from icy Alaska to the blistering Gobi Desert. We will be stopping along the way in the warm plains of Spain and the bustling woodlands of what is now southern Argentina, as well as making a stop in the ancient rainforests of China. Join us as we journey to meet the 10 strangest dinosaurs of the Cretaceous period. In the verdant green forests of what is today New Mexico, USA, a large, looming figure is ambling through the undergrowth. On two legs, this long-necked oddity's shadow cuts through the ferns and horsetails, separating the light divided by the towering trees. Rearing its head, this dark brown figure identifiable now as a theropod dinosaur, is about half a meter taller than an adult human. If it wasn't for the scythe-like claws on each digit, this creature would appear almost comical as it steps into the dappled sunlight, revealing a form akin to a giant reptilian turkey, letting out something like a guttural hissing sound its chicks emerge from the undergrowth alongside it, as if on command. Tiny, fluffy, large-eyed creatures excitedly hopping from foot to foot. The adult, with one limb, snaps a branch from the tree and tucks into the rich leaves adorning it. This is Nothronychus, a bizarre American Therizinosaur. The Therizinosaurs were a very weird bunch indeed. Theropod dinosaurs that were mostly very large and mostly adapted to a herbivorous, browsing lifestyle, using their long necks and often exceedingly long claws to pull down branches. These creatures would have been a startling sight in the forests and plains they called home. Nothronychus closely resembled an ornithomimid dinosaur. Specifically, the large ones such as Dinochirus. It was first named in 2009, described from fossils discovered on New Mexico's border with Arizona in the Zuni Basin. It can be thought of as a Mesozoic precursor to America's giant ground sloths, such as Megalonyx, that were found across the continent in the Cenozoic, both in form and function. 
Nothronicus, would have spent much of its time peacefully ambling through the forest, using its elongated claws to pull greenery from tall branches into its mouth. Leaf-shaped teeth in its cheeks would have ground down the vegetation after passing through a strange, toothless beak, a feature uncommon in theropods. A thick coating of likely dark-colored feathers would have also fed into the giant ground sloth analog. But theories exist that the dinosaur's head, neck, and inner arms were just coated in bare skin. Another bizarre feature of this dinosaur was its pot belly and slightly curved spine, giving it a rotund, goose-like appearance as it wandered through the dense undergrowth. Equally strange was Nothronychus's discovery. This dinosaur was initially found in marine deposits alongside aquatic life forms. This animal plainly wasn't adapted to life at sea, so why were its remains found here? The answer has been debated over the years, but it looks like the majority of scientists agree that the individual that died was swept out to sea, perhaps by a storm. Weirdly, this specimen had not been eaten by the numerous predators that lurked in the waters of Cretaceous America and the fossils were intact. As a result, it is thought that maybe this Nothronychus drifted away from land on a huge floating mat of vegetation or soil, either dying on the mat or drowning when the mat broke up, the corpse then being covered by the falling foliage. In 2010, a truly bizarre bone was dug up from the rocks in northern Patagonia, Argentina. Dating from the early Cretaceous period was a neural spine from the neck of a sauropod dinosaur, unknown to science at this point. The spine was bifurcated, meaning that it split into two prongs at the tip of the spine bone, creating a fork-like shape and the prongs faced forward, towards what would have been the dinosaur's head. Alongside this were pieces of skull, lower jaw, and brain case, and striation marks on the bones show the dinosaur's spine would have been covered in keratin in real life. Paleoartists were quick on the draw to reconstruct this bizarre beast, Bahatosaurus, as a peculiar sauropod, with huge needle-like spines projecting forward from the neck over the animal's head, with a long, tapering tail dragging behind the bulky torso. It's a spectacular beast indeed. Bahatosaurus would have been massive by today's animal standards, but relatively small for a sauropod about the same size as an elephant, the bulk of the creature's length would have been its tapering tail. This was a dicreosaurid dinosaur, related, albeit quite distantly, to the famous Diplodocus, which likely used its tail as a whip to deter and wound predators. The spines were there in the flesh, however, and they would have been marvelous an identifying feature on this bizarre beast. Recent news surrounding its close cousin Amargosaurus, however, might indicate that, although this creature was truly bizarre, our depictions of it up to this point may not have been accurate. Intricate studies in the fibers and ligaments surrounding similar spinal structures in Amargosaurus have pointed to the presence of a huge, skin-covered sail on the dinosaur's neck, as opposed to bare, sharp spines projecting from the neck. Perhaps the same can be said for Bahatosaurus, which would have possibly been an even stranger sight in real life, as it patrolled the plains and hills of Patagonia, 
145 million years ago. Amidst a landscape of towering trees, where it's near impossible to see further than a few meters in front of you, something leaps from the canopy. High above the ground, a tiny dinosaur is jumping from tree to tree, spending a minute or two on each trunk before launching itself to the next one. This is Scansoriopteryx, and at 30 centimeters in length, it's the size of an average bird on your garden feeder. High above the ground, it's barely possible to recognize Scansoriopteryx as a dinosaur, let alone discern any features that might make it strange. But as it hops on a low-hanging branch, it becomes easy to see why this little oddity has made this list. Covered in a fine layering of display feathers, perhaps contrasting browns, whites, blacks, and the odd splash of yellow to blend in with the tones of the forest. You'd be forgiven for thinking Scansoriopteryx was not of this world. What you've got here is essentially a theropod dinosaur, filling the ecological niche of a small monkey. With its long tail, large eyes, and grasping hands. Most notable are the dinosaur's fingers. The third digit of each hand is almost twice the length of the second longest, adding even more to the absurdity of this creature. As the dinosaur sits on a low-hanging branch, it uses this finger to bore into holes in the side of the trees. The entire finger disappears within the thick bark of the trunk, and as it slowly re-emerges, a juicy grub sits pierced on the sharp claw adorning the digit's end. This little insectivorous dinosaur likely used these long fingers as spears to fish inside trees for invertebrates to eat. Discovered in China's Liaoning province in 2002, Scansoriopteryx is one of the smallest non-avian dinosaurs ever to evolve, and coincidentally also one of the strangest. The canopy of prehistoric Liaoning's trees would have been filled with small, strange creatures like this, making up an ecosystem not too dissimilar to a modern-day rainforest, where hundreds of creatures coexisted and competed in a bustling green environment. Scansoriopteryx's long digits may also have assisted the dinosaur in locomotion amongst the treetops, making this bizarre little beast the Mesozoic's answer to a tamarin or marmoset. As we travel north to Mongolia's Gobi Desert, we go from encountering one of the most strikingly small theropods to one of the most outlandishly and unexpectedly large ones. Passing along the flats and scrubland of this dramatic Cretaceous expanse are colossal feathered figures that sit in pairs on huge nests these are gigantoraptors, the largest of a group of theropods known as cygnathids, a group not too distantly related to the famous oviraptor. With a body length of 8 meters and a weight of roughly 2 tons, gigantoraptor is one of the largest creatures in these arid floodplains. These large creatures sit on equally large rings of eggs, covered in a thin layer of dirt and foliage, with a gap in the middle for the parent to sit, carefully avoiding any unnecessary damage. Partially disguised by the skeletal outline of once verdant bushes, another figure skulks around the outside of the gigantoraptor group. But this is something different. As a mother, 
Gigantoraptor rears her head from her nest. An adult male Electrosaurus, a type of Tyrannosauroid, bursts from the shrubs, charging her head on, hoping to catch her off guard and snap up some eggs. She stands, meeting the predator eye to eye, loudly screeching and frantically flapping her arm feathers in a threatening display. The Electrosaurus fails to heed the warning, however, and lunges forward in a mock attack, hoping to put her off. The pair exchange threats for a few minutes before the mother decides she can take no more chances. With her powerful muscles, she raises her right leg and gashes the attacker across the face with powerful claws, temporarily blinding him. This is a fight the Electrosaurus will be unable to win, and he turns tail towards the foliage. First and foremost, what makes Gigantoraptor such a strange creature is its size. It was by far the largest of the Cygnathids, a group that largely contained very small theropod dinosaurs, akin to chickens or turkeys. Gigantoraptor would have stood tall above them all in a lineup, balancing that unexpectedly familiar mix of majesty and comicality witnessed with Nothronychus at the start of this video. However, it takes more than size alone to make it on this list, and it's Gigantoraptor's appearance, ultimately, that helps it take the title. It's likely that this giant theropod would have resembled something between a giant ostrich and a giant chicken, standing on two huge pillar-like legs, supporting itself with a long, likely feathered tail to balance out the creature's long, crane-like neck. Gigantoraptor has always been reconstructed with lots of artistic license and speculation which has led to some truly weird and wonderful results. Sharp beaks, armored head casks, fleshy wattles, and brightly colored display feathers are just some examples that have helped this dinosaur earn its place on our list. And it must have been an otherworldly experience to be able to witness one in the flesh At first sight, Carnotaurus might not be obviously strange enough to make it on this list. It shares the general form with many of the large carnivorous theropods that populated the planet throughout the Cretaceous period. That elongated bipedal gait, with large jaws and a long tail. But take a closer look. The dinosaur walks on longer legs than the average large theropod, possesses two intimidating bull-like horns above each eye, and its arms are so small that you might be forgiven for not noticing them entirely. Carnotaurus was likely a rather terrifying sight in the woodlands and plains of late Cretaceous Argentina. It was large, roughly eight meters of muscle, horns, claws, and teeth. Its deep, imposing skull would have harbored anchor points for two horns, the size of which has been debated since its discovery in 1985. Some reconstructions depict Carnotaurus as having huge horns that jut out from side to side of the skull whereas the more common depiction shows the dinosaur with horns at a much more humble length, sat neatly atop its head. The use of these horns has also been debated since Carnotaurus' discovery. Theories range from the dinosaur using the horns for intimidation purposes, to taking part in mating displays, to sparring with rival males of the same species. It seems like the latter might be the most likely option. Studies have been completed which show evidence for the dinosaurs exchanging quick, powerful blows with their horns, or perhaps even headbutting each other face first. 
The strangest feature of Carnotaurus is not its horns, however, but the arms, or lack thereof. The dinosaur possessed mere vestigial arms, all but lost to the annals of evolution. These limbs were stunted both in size and function, as they also lacked carpalia, the bones that allowed a hand to articulate itself separately from the forearm. Therefore, this dinosaur would have had to move its entire limb in one go, without the use of its hands. Four tiny stump-like fingers tipped the hand, which were also vestigial and would have been useless for grasping or manipulation. So what was the purpose of them? Apple TV's Prehistoric Planet, a recent 2022 documentary that aimed to depict the dinosaurs in the most accurate light to date, may have the answer. Display. In one scene, a male Carnotaurus is seen displaying to a potential mate in a forest clearing, rapidly waving his bright blue arms around in a manner similar to the way modern birds display. Though tiny, they contrast vividly against his dull brown body and likely created a mesmerizing display to the female. It's speculative, yes, but it's an interesting theory to think about. Crossing the Atlantic from Argentina to Spain now, we encounter another strange giant theropod, Concavenator. This creature, again, following the classic general theropod body plan, measured about six meters in length from nose to tail. But, similar to Carnotaurus, there were strange differences that set it aside from its contemporaries. Concavenator is known first and foremost for its hump. Not something we typically associate with dinosaurs, let alone a large carnivorous theropod. The presence of the hump was betrayed by the discovery of two extremely tall vertebrae just in front of the hips, which may have supported one of two things, a hump or a crest. Scientists still aren't particularly sure what the function of this strange feature was, but theories have included display, temperature regulation, or communication. If the former is correct, it is possible that the crest was adorned in bright, attractive patterns or colors, making it a very unusual sight in the forests and plains in which it thrived 130 million years ago. That's not all Concavenator had to offer in the odd department, however. As we move down to look at the dinosaur's forelimbs, we can see another strange structure some sort of filamentous integument. Not quite feathers, but something akin to them. The presence of bumps on the dinosaur's ulna indicate that the underside of its arms may have been lined with quill-like structures, which potentially add to the vibrancy of its displays. This has been the subject of debate, however, and some paleontologists believe that these bumps were the anchor points for muscles and not quills. Similar structures have been found in Ornithischian dinosaurs, such as Cytecosaurus, as well as some theropods, such as Delong, so we can't rule out the presence of quills on this dinosaur. In the eerie silence of the Gobi Desert night, the faint winds are disrupted by the tiny running footsteps of a small dinosaur. Cloaked in a layer of beige and brown feathers, about one meter in length, and adorned with a face making it look like a peculiar modified owl, this little Shuvuya is just starting its day. As he runs across the sand, 
he leaps like a jerboa over the rocks and twigs scattered across the sand. As he approaches a small patch of trees surrounded by pale, jagged rocks, one of these rocks stands much taller than the rest. Its dark shades and abnormal structure giving it away as a termite mound. Just what our little Shuvuya is looking for. His large eyes scan the scene, and he spots it, leaping up onto its flank to investigate. Without delay, the little dinosaur reveals his bizarre secret weapon. Limbs, which end in one single curved claw, adapted to digging out insect nests. Without effort, the little dinosaur scrapes his tough claws down the termite mound's tough exterior like a feathered reptilian anteater, coaxing a band of aggressive termites out of their home to investigate the chaos. It's no use now, though, as the insects are lapped up into the theropod's jaws. He'll stay here for a while until he's had his fill. Shuvuya was an alvarezor, a particularly strange group of small feathered theropods that were adapted to digging for their food, usually insects, in the ground, termite mounds, trees, or fallen wood. They were perfectly adapted to this lifestyle, each of them possessing just one digit on each hand that was entirely devoted to digging up prey Shuvuya, in particular, had an ear structure similar to that of modern barn owls, giving them an acute sense of hearing, perhaps specialized for determining whether or not a structure contained insects, saving the dinosaur some valuable time when choosing where to dig. Another odd little feature of Shuvuya's is that it could flexibly move its upper jaw independently of its brain case perhaps allowing it to manipulate its jaws around an insect nest or branch to snap up the invertebrates inside. Finally, from studies on the scleral ring bones that surrounded its large eyes, scientists have been able to tell that little Shavuya was a master of the night. While other dinosaurs would have hunted diurnally, Shavuya was unique in its ability to hunt in complete pitch blackness. When the sun went down for the day, this little insectivore would bound across the desert sands in search for its prey in relative safety, free from competition. It was perfectly adapted to its lifestyle. Similar to Shavuya, we're about to meet a little dinosaur with various adaptations that make it a wonder of natural history, and a truly bizarre one at that. Leolinosaura was named after Leolin Rich, the daughter of the fossil's discoverer Tom Rich, an Australian paleontologist famous for his work on extinct Australian mammals. Leolinosaura was not a large creature, nor are many of its early depictions remarkable. But as time has gone on, our understanding of this two-meter-long ornithischian biped have developed. And as a result, the way we depict this dinosaur has rapidly changed. Firstly, Leolinosaura was a polar dinosaur. It was discovered in Victoria, Australia, which, at the time the dinosaur lived, would have been further south towards the Antarctic Circle. Although conditions here at the time would have been warmer than today's, the dinosaurs that lived at the South Pole would still have been living in very, well, polarized conditions. One long temperate summer day and one long cold winter night would have been the norm for the organisms of the poles in the Cretaceous. Similar to the nature of these areas today. In the past, Leolinosaura has been depicted as a typical, nondescript 
bipedal ornithischian dinosaur, similar to the ways we have previously looked at dinosaurs such as Dryosaurus. When taking into consideration its habitat, as well as other small bipedal ornithischians across the globe, artists have begun to depict Leolinosaura quite differently. Most modern depictions of this dinosaur now make it look like a bizarre rodent, or perhaps a type of quail, bundled up in thick, fluffy down that would have protected it throughout the long winter months. Perhaps it even changed this coat seasonally, long and white in the winter, short and dark in the summer, to adapt with having to live in long periods of seasonal dark, Leolinosaura also had tremendously large eyes for its size. We can't speak about Leolinosaura without mentioning its bizarre tail. It was immense, three times as long as the rest of its body. It's likely that the tail would have been used to keep the dinosaur warm in its burrows or nests, perhaps covered in a thick layer of filamentous feathers that would have been able to wrap around its body or young at night. Other, more speculative depictions of this tail have been published, however, and one in particular sparks the imagination. All Yesterdays by Darren Nish C.M. Kozman and John Conway, a book depicting dinosaurs in particularly speculative forms, shows a squirrel-like Leolinosaura wandering an icy forest in a large group, where members prop their long tails, adorned in a bright yellow flag-like tip skyward, perhaps to communicate or to signal danger to the family. What's more, is that scientists can't really decide on Leolinosaura's place in Ornithischia. Initially assumed to be a species of Hypsilophodont, it was then counter-debated that the dinosaur could have been a basal Iguanodontian. Now, it is suggested that the little dinosaur sits within the clade Elasmaria, much closer to its original placing with the Hypsilophodonts. Most ceratopsian dinosaurs, the group that includes the frilled horned oddities, such as Triceratops, Styracosaurus, Pentaceratops, and Protoceratops, were odd. There's no denying that. Many of them were like dinosaurian rhinoceroses, with bulky barrel-shaped bodies, elaborate horned faces, and plenty of muscles packed into them. Udanoceratops, however, was even stranger. This roughly four meter long leptoceratopsid ceratopsian dinosaur walked its arid scrubland home on four relatively thin legs, which made its bulky body look strangely top heavy. A deep paddle like tail sat at the end of the creature which has often been depicted as being lined with quill-like filaments, similar to the ones present on the arms of Concavenator, the Spanish theropod we met earlier. This isn't what sets Udanoceratops apart from other ceratopsians, though. What makes it weird is its facial appearance. More than anything, Udanoceratops is strange, for the most basic of reasons, it simply looks odd. Most features of the dinosaur make sense. It was herbivorous, with a tough beak that would have allowed it to feed on particularly tough vegetation, possibly plant stems or harder leaves. To cut through these stems, it needed an extremely powerful bite. And it's that function that gives Udanoceratops a strange look. The skull was much deeper than that of many other ceratopsians. And the lower jaw in particular looked odd, with a deep, 
upward-facing curve that ended in a blade-like beak. This coupled with the overbite, tall upper jaw, tiny eyes, and small neck frill give this relatively small ceratopsian a truly alien look. It's certainly a creature that would have stood out on the plains of prehistoric Mongolia in the late Cretaceous. We finish our tour of the Cretaceous's strangest dinosaurs in the icy fields and forests of Alaska 70 million years ago. On a freezing, snow-covered hillside, lined with dark rocks and coniferous forests, a group of Alaska cephali are displaying. These large bipedal ornithischians have gathered in a small group, two males and a female, to determine which male will gain the right to mate. With their domed heads, they exchange powerful blows to the flanks headbutting the fatty, insulated skin of their rival's left side while facing parallel to one another. Despite the thick skin, these blows still take a toll on the combatants, and after 10 minutes or so, one male is deemed victorious. He will gain the right to mate with this female, and it is his successful genes that will be carried down to their offspring. The second male limps away, temporarily wounded from his unsuccessful fight with the victor. As he wanders back down the hill, he is oblivious to the approaching danger. A six-meter-long polar tyrannosaur camouflaged in the snow. With his leg wounded, there is only so much he can do to escape the jaws of death that close tightly around his torso and the predator swiftly manages to make a kill. There is no way the unfortunate Alaska cephali could have avoided this one. With his mind preoccupied on his loss, the mighty Nanoxorus was just too well camouflaged against the blanket of snow to fail. Like a pale white ghost, he drags his quarry behind a tree and tucks in. Nanoxorus translates into English to polar bear lizard, which will explain a little bit about how this animal might have lived. It was likely the apex predator of this snowy Alaskan domain at the end of the Cretaceous, and Alaska cephali is just one animal that it could have preyed on in this vast, cold landscape of large herbivores. It is unusual to picture dinosaurs living in the snow. But the truth is, by the end of the Cretaceous, these reptiles had conquered all the continents and pretty much all the habitats within them. The poles were no different, and Nanoxorus commanded its domain of ice with the ferocity of its namesake. A close relative of the famous Tyrannosaurus Nanoxorus was likely insulated with a thick layer of downy feathers, which will have not only protected it from the cold weather of Alaska, but may have provided it with valuable camouflage that aided the Tyrannosaur in taking down the large herbivores of the tundra and snowy landscapes it called home. Often depicted in a near all-white cloak of down, it would have been near impossible for a prey item to spot an oncoming Nanoxorus amidst a howling blizzard or endless expanses of snow, making it an efficient, deadly hunter. Much like Tyrannosaurus, the polar Nanoxorus possessed long, deep jaws that would have been backed by an immense degree of power, allowing it to deliver a strong bite that could have easily debilitated its prey. Strangely, however, it was much smaller than Tyrannosaurus, possibly attributable to the scarcity of food out on the snowy tundra. Still, it was the largest predator of this paleo environment, 
and would have been a rather eerie sight amidst a frozen world of glistening white. The Cretaceous was a time when dinosaurs had fully blossomed into their full potential. This group of ruling reptiles were not only majestic and plentiful, they were strange too, especially when you look at them in context with the wildlife of our modern world. This is by no means an exhaustive list of the strangest dinosaurs of the Cretaceous alone. As we mentioned at the beginning, the dinosaurs ruled the Earth for around 165 million years, and that time allowed them to bloom into all sorts of bizarre forms. This really is just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed our trip through the strangest dinosaurs of the Cretaceous period.